Why be the rock star's girlfriend when you can be the rock star? In all seriousness though, the Rockstar Girlfriend aesthetic and the Indie Sleaze aesthetics are two closely tied aesthetics that originated from the mid-2000s based on the hipster and grunge aesthetics. So today I'm going to do a deep dive on these aesthetics including where to shop, clothing essentials, the history of these aesthetics, and even some controversy surrounding these aesthetics. To start off, Indie Sleaze is a tongue-in-cheek aesthetic that originated from the mid-2000s party scene and grew in popularity on Tumblr and MySpace. It was popular from 2008 to 2014 and was influenced from hipster fashion, 70s to 80s electro rock music, 90s grunge, pop art, and super flat pop. So some of the visuals you'd see a lot in this aesthetic include high flash photography, electro rock dance halls, imprecise eyeliner, smudged mascara, old American apparel ads, messy hair and side bangs, glitter, chain necklaces, and colored tights. According to this InStyle article, the everyday hipster looks consisted of metallic leggings and tunics, knitted beanies, fedoras, and chunky pastel colored costume pearls. The upscale hipsters, think Alexa Chung and the Olsen twins, were donning designer skinny jeans, skinny scarves, leather jackets, and layered vintage pieces. This era is pretty interesting because it's kind of the last era where we didn't have smartphones so prevalent everywhere. So people kind of dressed for themselves and they didn't dress for the camera at all times and they just kind of wore what they liked. And I feel like we're kind of trying to recreate that effortless vibe with this revival. So the hipster aesthetic has risen from the dead in the form of indie sleeves as Gen Z's interpretation of this time period. So it takes a lot of inspo from them, but I feel like this revival is more chaotic and messy and mismatched. And the Rockstar Girlfriend aesthetic is kind of an offshoot of the indie sleaze movement and like the name suggests, it is based on the styles of Rockstar's girlfriends like Alexa Chung, Devin Lee Carlson, and Kate Moss when they all dated Rockstars. Now, like many other aesthetics, <clears throat> see my Have Aesthetics Gone Too Far video, this aesthetic has also come under fire for some controversy as well. With the Rockstar Girlfriend aesthetic, many people are concerned about its name. According to this article on The Face, its name defines women through their relationship with men. In the Rockstar Girlfriend universe, men create, make music, and perform, while beautiful women become accessories for them to show off to the world. The name of the aesthetic needs to go, says trend forecaster and writer Mandy Lee, who specializes in naming trends on TikTok. Women don't need to be reduced to the men in their life. I think this is pretty fair criticism. Why should we aspire to be Rockstar's girlfriends when we can be the Rockstars, like I said in my intro? In fact, many Rockstar's girlfriends are actually Rockstar's themselves, like Courtney Love, Sky Ferreira, and Suki Waterhouse, so we shouldn't diminish them to just being someone's girlfriend when they have a full-on Rockstar career themselves. Not only this, but the Rockstar girlfriend aesthetic and the indie sleeves aesthetic as well tend to glamorize hard partying, binge drinking, drugs, and cigarettes, and when you look up inspiration for these aesthetics, you tend to see a lot of very thin white women. These aesthetics come from a time period where heroin chic was glorified, so this can obviously be very dangerous and lead to unhealthy lifestyles. And I do really like the fashion, and so I really hope we can bring it back without bringing back these values. You can have an indie sleeve or rockstar girlfriend wardrobe without having that lifestyle. But with all that said, let's go ahead and talk about the essentials and where to shop for this aesthetic. So in terms of the color scheme, for indie sleeves, I don't think there's a very strict color scheme, but you definitely see a lot of dark colors, a lot of black, and muted colors instead of bright, vibrant colors. For the Rockstar Girlfriend aesthetic, I would say there's a lot of black, white, and red. And in general, you would see a lot of lace materials or sheer materials, leopard print, unfinished or raw hems, sequins as a nod to the party scene, and leather. For tops, I would look for graphic tees, especially cropped or baby tees, oversized men's button-ups, sheer tops or dresses, lace trim camisoles or bralettes, fur coats or fur trim coats, black mini dresses or slip dresses. For bottoms, I would look for maxi or midi skirts, especially low-waisted skirts because of the influence from the 2000s, but that's not a requirement because I know low-waisted isn't flattering on everyone, <clears throat> speaking for myself. Mini skirts look good as well, or pleated skirts, or a good old trusty pair of jeans, or leather pants especially for the rockstar aesthetic. 
For accessories, you can incorporate tube socks or sheer or lace socks, over-the-ear headphones, sheer tights or fishnet tights, black sunglasses, and baguette purses. For makeup, I would go for a smoky eye look, metallic eyeshadow, messy eyeliner and mascara, or red lipstick, especially for the rockstar aesthetic as well. And for shoes, I would go for chunky platform shoes, a lot of the Y2K era, loafers, docks or combat boots, knee-high boots, or just some sneakers. Now, in terms of where to shop, I feel like these two aesthetics are great because they can fit all sorts of budgets and it's not too hard to achieve these looks because they are some pretty basic or classic pieces like a leather jacket for example. So first off, for a more affordable and sustainable option, you can thrift many of these items especially because these aesthetics come from the early thousands and the 2010s. You can find a lot of these items in thrift stores. Urban Outfitters has always been a great option for indie aesthetics as well, very accessible because it is in a lot of malls. And on that note, typical mall stores like H&M and Zara should have a lot of basics that can fit this aesthetic as well. Or you can even check like Target, Marshalls, TJ Maxx. On the higher price end, we have Inigo London for a sustainable option. And they are pricey, but they have a lot of items for a bunch of different aesthetics. So I think they're a really cool option. Free People is one of my favorite stores that have kind of more bohemian vibes. But I feel like a lot of these vibes can be paired with like leather and more uh, edgy accessories to make it into a indie sleaze or rockstar girlfriend outfit. Alter is a size inclusive and sustainable option. Um, I really particularly like their dresses, but they have other options and accessories as well. And I would check generally alternative stores, for example, Noctex, which is another size inclusive option, and they have a lot of edgy clothing and accessories. And I think a lot of these accessories would be really great to make a more basic outfit look more rockstar girlfriend or indie sleeves. And finally, Tunnel Vision is another alt brand and they have a lot of really fun clothing options as well as cool accessories. I particularly really love their jewelry. So that is pretty much all I wanted to cover with the rockstar girlfriend and indie sleeves aesthetics. Let me know what you think of these aesthetics and what you think of the name rockstar girlfriend and if we should just call it the rockstar aesthetic. Personally, I think that's a better term. And let me know what aesthetics you want me to cover in the future in the comments below. And if you want to discover new aesthetics or find some outfit inspiration or share your own outfits, definitely check out my Discord channel where we can talk about anything fashion and aesthetics. I'll link it down below and also check out my Etsy shop Monsoon Mist for some more accessory ideas as well as book covers and art prints if you're into that. And I will see you guys next time.